Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist, and this is Cindy Oliver, and she's a dog. So last week, I made a video looking at a number of studies around excess mortality, and the studies showed that mortality rates were higher amongst people who hadn't been vaccinated for COVID than people who had. And also show that if you are unvaccinated, you are at an increased risk of death after COVID, even after you have recovered from COVID. Strangely enough, at the same time, Dr. John Campbell also made a video about excess mortality, which he called sad excess deaths. His video didn't provide any information about the differences in mortality between vaccinated and unvaccinated people, but he did attempt to make some nudge, nudge, wink, wink claims suggesting something nefarious with vaccines. So how did he do that? Let's have a look. We want to look at excess deaths today that are just carrying on in a group of countries where they are remaining high. But there's another group of countries where excess deaths are well below the average. What is going on here? Now, let's look at this graphic here to begin with. And this is not related to the excess deaths, of course. This is related to uh, vaccination status. And this is share of people who completed the initial COVID-19 vaccine protocol. So we see we've got countries that are fairly highly vaccinated up here. Australia, Canada, Ireland, New Zealand, Denmark, United Kingdom, United States, Netherlands, what we might call the more affluent countries up here. And then we've got poorer European countries beneath who vaccinated at much lower rates. So, for example, we see Moldova there vaccinated at what round about the 30% rate as opposed to Australia, where it was well over the 80% rate. So difference between 30 and 80 so really quite significant difference in, in vaccination rates. And just let's look at that here. So we see countries that are um, highly vaccinated up here. And then we compare that to countries, this group of countries where there's low amounts of vaccination here. So that's interesting to note. OK, so he's cherry picked some countries with high vaccination rates and some other countries with low vaccination rates. I wonder what he's going to show us next. Denmark, again, looking at this trend here, we've got this overall trend of excess mortality in Denmark. New Zealand, it has been high, but New Zealand does seem a little bit lower at the moment, but it has been high for some time. And uh, New Zealand can be a little bit slow with their data. So let's hope that's a genuine uh, picture of uh, New Zealand. I'm just showing you a bit of it, but he basically shows that all countries on his cherry pick list of highly vaccinated countries have some excess mortality in 2023. Well, except for that pesky New Zealand, which he convincingly dismisses. Well, convincing to his fans anyway. But what about if we look at some of the highly vaccinated countries that he hasn't included in his list? For instance, Spain, France, Malta and Portugal all have high vaccination rates, which are above the European average. What does their excess mortality look like now? Okay, let's start with France. If we look at 2023, we can see that excess mortality is primarily negative. Next up is Spain. As you can see, if you look at 2023, Excess mortality is hovering around the zero mark. What about Portugal? Just like Spain, excess mortality is hovering around the zero mark in 2023. And finally, Malta, hovering up and down around the zero mark for the whole of the pandemic. Now, of course, I cherry pick these countries to prove a point in the same way that John cherry picked countries that showed what he wanted to claim. But, and by the way, I did try to find some fresh cherries at my local supermarket to help 
illustrate my point about cherry picking, but they didn't have any. So I bought these freeze-dried cherries instead. Not really the same impact, but what can you do? Anyway, back to metaphorical cherry picking. You can cherry pick stuff like this to support any stupid claim that you want, but it doesn't make it true. You can't assess vaccine effects by looking at country level excess mortality in 2023. It's nuts. We know that vaccines have a beneficial effect on mortality from numerous studies, some of which I covered in my last video. But none of this stops John. He then goes on to show the 2023 data for countries that were on his list of low vaccinated countries. Um, Hungary, again, well below the average line of the previous five years. So reduced excess deaths in Hungary, not quite as long as some other European countries, but they've been down for quite some time now, certainly since uh, all of 2023. Good news in Hungary. Hang on, Hungary? Where were they on John's list of countries by vaccination status again? And just reminding ourselves of the countries where the vaccination rates are higher. So all this money spent on vaccinations, and yet we still have the excess deaths in these countries. Now, here we have countries where the vaccination rates are much lower. Generally, poorer Eastern European countries with lower vaccination rates. Yes, that's right. Hungary isn't even on the list. John has just slipped it in and hoped that no one would notice. And if you're wondering what proportion of Hungary's population is vaccinated, it's slightly below the level in the Netherlands, which John included as an example of a highly vaccinated country. Anyway, based on this dubious data, John then makes this clangor. Now, let's just remind ourselves of the uh, graphic we looked at earlier on. Uh, share of people who've uh, completed the initial COVID vaccine protocols. The country that has uh, spent more on vaccination, sadly, not reaping the benefit of that, in that these are the countries with higher deaths. The countries with the lower vaccination rates, as we've seen, are the countries with lower death rates. So it looks like it's better to live in a poorer country. OK, you don't get the high COVID vaccination rates that we uh, um, benefited from uh, here, um, but you get less success deaths. Now, let's ignore the fact that John cherry-picked the countries he used for his examples. Is he even right based on the countries that he did choose? Of course not. To determine which countries have the highest rate of excess mortality, you need to look at mortality across the whole pandemic. You can't just cherry pick a short time period. So let's look at the data when we do this. This chart shows cumulative deaths from all causes compared with what was projected based on previous years. And it shows it at a rate per 1 million people. And because it uses a rate instead of absolute numbers, it allows you to compare excess mortality between countries. And the countries on this chart are the same countries on John's chart of highly vaccinated versus lowly vaccinated countries. As you can see, with the exception of Kosovo, the countries with the highest excess mortality are the countries that were on John's list of lowly vaccinated countries which is the exact opposite of what John is trying to claim. Now, it's important to remember that there will be many confounders in this data, so it's not really valid to draw too many conclusions about vaccination from comparing excess mortality by countries, but it is interesting that the data is consistent with the studies that I showed last week that showed that being unvaccinated was associated with higher excess mortality. Now, you may be wondering why some countries that had massive excess mortality early in the pandemic no longer have excess mortality now. 
It will, of course, be multifactorial, but a contributing factor is mortality displacement, which is a phenomenon by which a period of high mortality is followed by below average mortality, or a period of below average mortality is followed by a period of above average mortality. In other words, you can only die once. So if a massive number of people died earlier than expected, they won't be dying when they normally would have. So it will appear that excess mortality is lower. But a high price was paid for the lower mortality now. As I said, the other type of mortality displacement is when a period of below average mortality is followed by a period of above average mortality. Or in other words, no one lives forever. This is apparent in this chart here, which is a blow up of the cumulative mortality data for Australia, Denmark, and New Zealand, which was down the bottom of the other chart that I showed. As you can see, all three countries experienced negative excess mortality as the pandemic took hold. And the reason for this was that the various measures that were put in place to stop COVID spreading also stopped the spread of other contagious diseases, which meant these countries experienced reduced mortality from influenza, et cetera, et cetera. However, the people who didn't die from influenza and other contagious diseases are now starting to die from the underlying conditions that would have made them susceptible to dying sooner. And this means that the overall death rate is now increasing. Although if you look at New Zealand, you can see that the overall excess mortality for the pandemic is currently about zero. But we are starting to see increases in excess mortality in Denmark and Australia now. And the reason is COVID. Measures to decrease the spread of COVID are no longer being implemented. So we are starting to see COVID mortality in all three countries, but less so in New Zealand. And this is now also contributing to excess mortality, both directly and indirectly. And by indirectly, I mean the impact of COVID on subsequent mortality risk that I discussed in my video last week as well as its effects on the healthcare system leading to delays in emergency and routine care. But it is important to remember that although we are now starting to see excess mortality from COVID in Australia and Denmark, overall excess mortality still remains well below that of countries who weren't as successful in controlling the spread of COVID prior to vaccination and those with low vaccination rates. John then goes on in his video to rehash a bunch of charts showing excess mortality in England. I made a video addressing his claims the last time he showed them, so I won't repeat it here, but I will provide a link in this video's description if you'd like to watch it. Anyway, John rounds off his video by asking some very pertinent questions. When will this trend end? We are losing so many people. And to be quite honest, I'm one of the few people talking about it. Why isn't this a national international scandal? Why aren't the investigative journalists from the national televised uh, news agencies um, crawling all over this story, demanding the truth? The silence remains deafening. The deaths remain uh, higher than we would expect consistently with a strange pattern that the, uh, the Western sophisticated countries have uh, higher rates of death. Countries like this that have coincidentally higher vaccination rates higher rates of death in these countries, lower rates of death. The references are all there. Look it up for yourself. Um, questions need to be asked. 
more freedom to ask more questions would be good. But anyway, I've shown you some uh, bizarre coincidences in this video. We'll leave it there. As always, thank you for watching. So why is John the only person talking about this? Well, he isn't. There's a bunch of other anti-vaxxers making the same stupid claims. But the reason investigative journalists and other media outlets aren't talking about it is because, unlike John, they have probably looked at the data properly, perhaps with the aid of someone with some expertise in epidemiology, and they know that John's claims are bollocks. All the data that I presented in this video comes from Our World in Data, and I've provided links to the various data sets in the video's description in case you'd like to look into it further yourself. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared, or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And thanks to everyone who played along in the last video and shared your meal and all the other humorous comments that I got, as well as, of course, the nice comments. They all brought a smile to my face. I thought this time you could tell me something nice about where you live. And, of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little sleepy Cindy here a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future, so if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.